tokens here. Make sure you have the same uh, one up I do, which I think is uh, under. Uh, I don't think we show Trevor Noah on this, do we? I just pulled it from there. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh I don't know. Let me look before you bring anybody in here. Un unshare. All right. Do we really show? I don't think we show Trevor Noah. Maybe not. Maybe you might be right. Let me see what uh, I got. Sign. Okay, come on. Sign in. What do you mean sign in? Fuck you. How much time we got? It's, it's time to sign in. Uh, let them in. I do have, uh, this is Building a Routine, No Curtis, Free Intro Deck, and Trevor Noah is in it after filling jokes with routines with jokes. Uh, uh, no, it's not. Okay. Different version then? Yeah. All right. Which one we uh, at then? Uh, it's... Uh, it says no techniques built, no cur no, uh, uh, with uh, free, no Curtis. Jeez, you just said that. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. it. Does it start with the, uh, uh, the, 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 the trustimonials of the students? Let me double check. I just went out to see if I if I needed to find a different version. You do, and that's okay. Look under uh, E twenty one free intro materials. Correct. Uh, go under, yeah, free intro. Uh, shit, I don't like being late. Uh, free intro. Uh, Building a routine. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, it's the top one, not one. No technique free intro. I don't have that one. Holy shit. I don't have that one. It must not be okay. shared. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start some music and bring some people in because we're running. Okay. Alright everybody, welcome. We'll be getting started shortly. Greg Dean, stand-up comedy, free seminar, how to build a stand-up comedy routine. How's it going, Tashi? What you snacking on tonight? <laughs> popcorn. Popcorn, nice. Hey, I'm 71 years old. Am I too old for this? No way. This you could you can you, there is a maximum age, but it's 340, and not many people make it. I got a ways to go. All right, thank yeah. you. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We'll start in just a minute. We're going to make sure we get everybody in here who might be interested in coming into the thing yeah um, samson are you the samson hey do you have any do you have any, do you have any light that's in front of you samson do you have any what the light that's in front of you have killed the music uh hold on a minute and uh lewis or luis he's um luis i'm, I'm from luis. mexico okay you got any light in front of you you got plenty of it behind you <laughs> <laughs> we can, so we can see your face. The same thing. Uh, well, Andre, you got any light in front of you? Um, you let me let, let me try with my oh, with my no. cell phone. And Vito, Vito, some extra light, buddy. Uh oh, you know, I mean, and and uh, I like how casual you are. You're just laying there with your cell phone, just. To... <laughs> yeah, 
Hey, hey, everybody, you. just so you know, since we have a lot of people here, if I do hear a lot of background noise during the presentation or any time, I'm going to have to mute you. Please don't be offended by the muting. It's not supposed to bother you. It's just we need to not hear all the background noise everybody has. And if you have background noise, uh, see if you can get rid of it. There you go. Thank you, Andre. Better. We can see you. And Vito, no, no, no better from Vito, but that's okay, Vito. That's like, uh, you're up, uh, looking up your nose is nice. That's fun. That is. That's good. That's <laughs> yes, I'm going to pick on people. You can't be picked on a little bit, really. Don't do stand up. I'm telling. You. Thank you, Samson. Very nice. Okay. Oh, we can actually see you. Can you can you go in dark again? <laughs> Just messing with you, Samson. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, you're nice and red. Me? That's nice. Uh, no, there's oh, Kevin. 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 Uh, oh, Del, 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 Delgadio. Delgadio, who's a, who's a Mustang. And we have Cash coming in. Andre, Andre, nice picture in the background, man. Right on. Yeah, I was, I was looking for my money, so I found it. <laughs> long as you found it you know, i lost Florida. my credit card so uh, i don't know uh, that's all much better and so elizabeth thank you you got light in front of you and in back of you you're doing a good job and the others i can't tell because if you're not welcome to come on camera we're just assuming you haven't done any any kind of uh uh cosmetic or hygiene health help on yourself since the COVID started. And you just, <laughs> I now, I, I just cut my COVID hair. Do you guys have COVID hair? Anybody have, uh, guys especially have COVID hair? Uh, Is COVID it? Had, yeah, yeah, that's it, yes. <laughs> Kevin, has it? COVID. Kevin, Kevin has COVID that's hair. It. I have COVID skin. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yes. Yeah, no, I had long hair getting down to my shoulders, actually, and let it grow for like 18 months or something. So nice to be able to, uh, uh, we, are, you on the, are you on the move, Ito? Are you on the... <laughs> Wherever Greg went, people thought he was Gandalf with a mask. Yes. Yeah, I was, you know, then... <laughs> Well, maybe it was that big floppy hat. I don't know. And that pipe. <laughs> maybe that gave me away. And that big cape. I, you know, just things like that. That so sometimes just give you away. <laughs> Let's see. Cash, you with us? Are you yes. out there? Yeah, good. All right. No no camera? Uh, Are you afraid, actually, yeah, afraid, afraid I'll make fun of you? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, what Kevin, I'm here for, right? Uh, uh, red, red, uh, Mustang, Kevin, you there? Mustang, Sally, anybody there? <laughs> okay. Got more people coming in. Oh my God. It's Tim Simpson. One of the finest actual cartoon artists I have ever known. Just popping in to say hi. He's a good friend. He was, he took, uh, he helped me with my very first class. Of, of the stand-up comedy workshops 40 years ago. 40. Uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, and that's uh, Gayla up there. It says Gayla Events. She is one of our teachers, and she's still teaching the end of an advanced class right now. So you see her working away, actually, watching her work. And all. That's cool. It's like we're at the pizza parlor and you're looking through the glass of the person making the pizzas back there. <laughs> you can't bother yeah. them. They're in their own world doing pizza. Yeah, she's she's a Krispy Kreme donut. <laughs> That's what she is. <laughs> Vito, looking for light. Okay, keep looking. You're doing good, buddy. <laughs> all right. Well, some hi, K I, I, uh, uh, hi, Tim. You're with us. Unmute. I'm here, Mr. Greg. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good to, good to hear from you, even though I can't see you. Yeah, I well, you know, I just, I haven't seen you in a long time, and I just owe my comedy life to you, and I'm not doing that for everybody else. Just want you to know, I think of you almost every week when I'm doing all my funny and my silly, and so I, it's been a while, and I want to see how you've 
I don't know, progress what you're doing. Yeah. Now. Well, thank you for thinking about me, especially when you're not touching yourself. Hey, hey, I don't have the video on. <laughs> <laughs> you're on to me. <laughs> and I, I hope Leslie as well. Everything's good. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Oh, did you hear? Hey, her? there she is. Yeah. All right. We went yeah, through a I, thing with our, our dog, you know, and it was pretty hard. We, we lost our pet, and that was oh, a real... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, I'd never gone through such a hardship. And I got to be honest, I used to mock people. I'd see people put their pet up, and i go, oh, it's a pet. What the heck? And then you go through it. Oh, never before have I been hit so hard. So that was tough. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm at work, so <laughs> I'm going to continue my work. Yes, here. go. And, get. I'll mute. You, know, you see, we got a whole matrix of people here. And also, and uh, Mariah, is that how I, did I say it right, Mariah? You're still coming in on audio. And Steve or Tanya are backup staff on our part, by the way. So there, I'm just uh, looking for cash and. Uh, We're all right. looking for cash, man. We're all. all yeah, yeah, especially Andre. He already, he already told us that. So that's good. All right. So, <laughs> Money on all my right. mind. All right. Uh, well, what time is it? We got 10 after. Well, I'm going to start because I always like to start very close to time anyway. So kind of here, we're going to take off. And I am going to share. Oops. Share my screen that is not. It has something else on it. All right. That's where it is. There it is. All right. Hey, Greg, I made it. I'm done with the time. I appreciate it. Yes, I know. So here we go. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we're going to have questions. Uh, if it's important questions, uh, put it in uh, uh, chat. Chat's at the bottom, as you see with the graphic at the top. Uh, down at the bottom, it'll say chat. Click on that, and you can type something into us, a question or something like that. My staff will pick it up and insert it in appropriate places. <laughs> Don't take it personally. All right. So <laughs> uh, just give you a moment here of what some of my students are saying, and I'll just disappear while they talk. Here they come. Who's Greg Dean? <laughs> <laughs> Someone told me there was free donuts. It was actually on the way to my other gig, so I <laughs> Okay, just jokes. Greg Dean. Good, have a seat. The number one important thing about comedy is your relationship with the audience. And that has helped me tremendously in improving as a comedian and as a person. And I think that uh, I think it's changed my life, my whole way of thinking. You know, taking this class, and so it's been it's been quite a journey. And happy to be on it. A lot of times, you'll see comedians get up there and just talk, and they might have funny material, but they're not connecting to the audience, and it makes a huge difference. And with your structure, I mean, I can tell funny stories, but if I don't structure it right, it doesn't get the laugh that you need from an audience that pays to see you as opposed to your friends. Um, but the number one thing that I think Greg and, and Gayla have, have taught me uh, is that I can do this and I can be successful at doing this and they've given me a lot of confidence. And I look at comedians like your Eddie Murphy's, your, your Robin Williams and that's my type of personality and I always wonder like how do they do what they do and it's the structure. A there are a couple of great things about taking this class. One is you get a system that's plug and play, and if you're stuck in traffic, you can take whatever is annoying you and put it through there and turn shit into fertilizer. Um, I love the fact that he, he didn't try to instill in you how to be funny. Uh, if you were funny, uh, great. If you weren't, some of us have learned what that's like. <laughs> His, um, his techniques have helped me to see, you know, more about m who I am as a person in this world. You actually really care about us, which is surprising. Uh, <laughs> nobody in LA ever cares about their students. He's taught me already that having a chemical and cultural imbalance may not be uh, restrictive in terms of being a stand-up comic. <laughs> and, and, he, and I hope he's right. I always believe that most stand-up comedians aren't funny. And I took Greg's class, and because of the structure, now I can actually explain to someone why they're not funny.
Thank you, Greg. <laughs> Matt. Uh, man, dead pan guy, man. He was really good, though. Very funny. And all. So there's just that. Uh, oh, don't do that. And so uh, here it is. We got the bu building a routine. Everything we're doing here is about building a routine. And uh, we're going to show you how to build a routine. It's a free intro to show you that that uh, what we're offering is is going to actually take you to the point of building a routine and not just building the routine, but knowing how you built the routine so you can do it again and again and again. That's part of the whole thing. It's not just, oh, here's a routine. I'll help you with it. It's helping you build the routine. And that's the difference between us and any other class is that we, you, at the end of it, you'll go, oh, I know where my jokes are and I know how they were written and I know, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it's a big difference about such things. So I just want to say everybody, uh, congratulations. Uh, you made it here. <laughs> You, you don't know how many people sign up for this and just don't show up. Fear does interesting things to people. And when you let fear win, uh, you just get, get good at letting fear win. And when you face your fears, you get good at facing your fears. And we know this is terrifying. We know this, it is. Stand-up comedy is very scary. for, And, and it's mostly if there's psychological reasons. There's no physical threat that comes along with this. It's, it's having the courage to get up and face those things. And uh, there's even more than you know about, et cetera. We had a long discussion in Clubhouse today about people... Uh, anyway, it was it was a really wonderful discussion. So you made it here. I just wanted to say congratulations because now you've taken the first step. You know, and so we'll find out at the end if you're willing to, take, to actually take uh, uh, the ultimate step and actually commit to starting to do this. And that's up to you. So uh, let's see. Uh, tonight, uh, you, you'll understand the skills needed to create a routine, as we just said. That's what you're, you're going to get. That's what we're after. We're just going to show those to you right here at the top. Uh, so. Uh, Gayla, go through some of these and uh, take over from here. How about hey, that? You got it. Happy to do that. Uh, building a routine. So in this class today, tonight, we're going to learn uh, different things like joke structure. So you can write funny jokes. Uh, make sure they're structured. Greg Dean's joke structure techniques. We're going to be working on uh, techniques to improve your material. You guys may have material. We just need to improve it. Uh, take out some of the words that aren't needed and make it and add tags. We, we'll talk about telling funny stories. I'm a storyteller. A lot of people are storytellers uh, versus just one-liner comics. So let's talk about telling funny stories. Greg will talk about the technique for that, how to organize routines. Sometimes you have a bunch of jokes and you want to put them into an organized routine. Um, maybe they're related in some way. We'll discuss what that's all about and a technique for that. The key to um, confident is overcoming stage fright. We'll talk about overcoming stage fright. That, that's the kind of thing that keeps us from performing freely and being ourselves. How do we get to that skill and technique? Connecting with the audience, being more confident. Greg will talk about both of those things. There's skills for that. Connecting with the audience is like a major, major important uh, uh, skill because the audience is in front of you. They are on stage with you. They're in the show with you. Connect with them and being more confident, really important in stand-up comedy. So for your FYI information, you're welcome to sign up during this. Uh, you don't have to wait to the end of this. You can sign up anytime during this webinar. We'll put the link in the chat. If it's not already uh, in there, we'll put it in there from time to time. You guys can just go to the link and get your seat in the class. We're filling up um, and still listen to the rest of the presentation. So you don't have to wait to the very end. If you're really interested in signing up for this technique class, um, there's a lot of benefits in our community and all the other perks we give you in this class. We'll get to that later on. Standupcomedy.com slash class. So who, is, who the expletive is Greg Dean? Uh, I know some of you like, uh, okay, Andre, you're hoping I would have just said that. No, I'm not going to just say that. <laughs> Who is Greg Dean? Well, he's mostly known by his book, The Green Book. Greg Dean, step-by-step -step to stand-up comedy. Hey, it's in paperback, ebook, audio book. This book has been out for a while. It's written in Chinese. It's been translated in Chinese. 
it's been translated in Indonesian and what's coming up soon is Spanish. Uh, comedia de Standa. It doesn't matter what language because joke structure is joke structure. Um, Greg, Greg is also a, a comedy store uh, comedian, a regular at the comedy store. You can go there. This is the world's famous comedy store that's been there. His name is on the wall. Uh, people that come out of there is Richard Pryor, uh, Eddie Murphy. Um, a lot of famous comedians come out of the comedy store and Greg's name is on the wall. He's been a comedian there uh, for a while. Um, he's been teaching stand-up comedy since 1982. Greg has been teaching stand-up comedy since before anyone knew it could be taught. You know, he's the, he's the guy that created the industry of teaching stand-up comedy because people don't think it can be taught. You think you're born with it or you're not, but Greg can teach it and he'll, he'll be explaining how ever since 1982. Please put your hands together or, or, and, and welcome the professor of stand-up comedy, Mr. Greg Dean, yeah. Yay, oh, Kevin. Kevin, thank you for that phony applause. I appreciate yeah. it. That's really okay. nice of you to know. Nice. I uh, can you make it next time louder and longer? Uh, <laughs> uh... <Sure. laughs> All right. I'm going to go over a few things uh, here and then kind of a quick little introduction kind of thing here. Uh, well, first of all, I want to back up and uh, just get, I'm going to get off this thing here for a second. And I just look around, you know, it's like, uh, you just, does anybody have any questions before we go into our presentation or do you want us just to talk about what we do? Cause we're here. And also I'm going to answer questions at the end. So, and after it's over, you can ask questions about anything. I'm just going to stick around and answer your questions too. I just want you to know that we're going to give you, we give you uh, unprecedented access to me and my staff. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna learn that as we go along. You're part of my uh, uh, whole uh, philosophy of teaching is do it with you, so you know what you're doing while we're doing it, and then helping you do it. So Andre, you had a question. Oh uh, yeah, where's the comedy store? Is it in L.A.? Yeah, it's the first comedy the first comedy club in the world. It was oh. the one that started everything on Sunset Boulevard. I've performed. I've been performing there off and on for. Oh, since the early 70s, actually, you know, I used to perform a lot with Robin Williams and you know, I saw all kinds of folks and stuff. So, you know, new Robin, we actually, Robin and I go back to San Francisco in this little hole in the wall called the Holy City Zoo. So it'll really crap uh, out of there came Bobby Slayton and uh, Kevin Pollack and Dana Carvey and uh, Paula Poundstone all came out of the Holy City Zoo in the San Francisco mm -hmm. time. Boy, that was a long time ago. But yeah, and then a lot of us migrated to San, San uh, Los Angeles because that's where the comedy store was. And then later the improv came along, but the comedy store was uh, there for years all by itself. And so actually it was uh, ran into JJ Walker in my hometown said, what should I do? Jimmy Walker. And he, he said, go to the comedy store and just start, you know, do their open mics and work your way in like the rest of the people. It's, you just go down and just do that. You just do it. Just go and decide you're going to do that and, and just stay dedicated to it. And that did, that's what I did. So, wow. you know, and then later I wrote jokes for him, ran into him again and said, I, you talked to me and he had, he didn't remember me, but he was like, oh yeah, I remember doing that gig and mm -hmm. Hey, you know, I'm like, you know, write some jokes and turn them in. So that was my first gig is writing jokes for Jimmy Walker. I forgot all about that. So thank you for that flashback. All right, I'm going to jump it. into this. Yeah, what else? <laughs> I just needed that. I just needed that. That was good. <laughs> good. All right, here we go. We're going to jump into some, uh, just some stuff that's up here on the board that helps us get through. Uh, since 1982, when I started, there were no fundamentals, right, Tim? Tim was there. Uh, we, he helped me write my original book, and we were just kind of putting stuff together at that time because there was no joke structure. There was really no joke writing thing. It was There was a joke writing system called the two-list system, which is uh, – uh, I used to teach it. Uh, it, it you pick something like uh, hospitals, and you do an association list, and then you give it a trait like uh, uh, what uh, was uh, like torture, and you make an association list. And step three was write jokes. <laughs> Now, for me, it worked great because I had a model in my head for whatever reason. And I wrote a lot of jokes. And so I taught, taught, taught it to my students. And half of them, like me, wrote jokes. And the other half went, I have no idea what you want me to do. You write a joke. 
I don't know what a joke is. And that's where it actually all began for me. So, well, if I'm going to teach joke writing, ooh, hmm. what's a joke? Uh, and that took me Whoa. 20 years to figure out. Literally, Whoa. it was 20 years. Hello? <laughs> So these fundamentals, it's taken me years. And so it's my life's mission now to uh, document and lay out what are the fundamentals like they are for everything else. You know, all the sports have fundamentals. Every position has fundamentals in sports. Dancing has fundamentals. Uh, you know, music, music. You could spend years in institutes studying fundamentals. Stand up had none when I started. And that's now that's what I'm trying to do or am doing and have done. Uh, and that's part of about part of what it is you'll learn in this is uh, what are those fundamental? What are the principles? What are the techniques? How do you use them? Uh, I do it this way so that the, because I don't want to teach my sense of humor. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, hey, who's doing their laundry? Call. All right. <laughs> so I've developed a way that I went about uh, figuring out these fundamentals. So the first thing was I found out my job was is to identify a fundamental, uh, some technique or principle. Okay. For instance, like if you're doing crowd work, I watch somebody and they'll purposefully misunderstand somebody in the audience. Okay. On purpose. They, you know, you know, so one time I was at the comedy store and I said a, a, to a couple of you two together and the guy said more or less. And I said, looked at the girl and said, he just said here, moralless. Right. And then, you know, then it went from there. Well, that was the technique. I was purposely misunderstanding. Well, then that's my job is to document those, figure those out. And then what I do is I turn those into an exercise. If you do these exercises with us, which you will, everything you do, you'll do exercises with us. And you practice those with us and at home, do all your exercises and do your homework and stuff like that. What happens is, is that turns in that that technique turns into a skill hmm. you practice with us misunderstanding so that when you get up on, in front of a crowd and start doing crowd work somebody says something you know what the cue is and you purposefully misunderstand now you're able to do it it's the difference hmm. between knowing what riding a unicycle is and being able to ride a unicycle i can teach you hmm. some fundamentals on riding unicycles because i used to when i was younger uh and, uh, you know, and then show you how to do it, certain things to do and stuff. And then it's, a, you have to get up and fall down. You do it enough. You do it enough. You do the exercises enough. And pretty soon you find your center and you're, you're driving around the block. You're doing tricks. Same thing with stand up. Okay. Uh, you know, my job, figure out the, the techniques, turn them into an exercise. And it's so that you attain the skill. Everything I teach follows this model. So everything you're working on is a skill you can practice, get better at, and apply to your sense of humor, not mine. Apply to your sense of humor, your way, okay? And that's a lot different than a teacher giving you their opinion or advice of what they do if they were in that situation. That's the difference between understanding and learning fundamentals and a teacher who sits around and gives you advice based upon how they would do it. In other words, they're, they're basically saying, this is the way I would do it. You should do it that way too. And I quickly found out when I was teaching, a lot of people wanted to do it a completely different way. So I found a different way to teach. So the next thing here is uh, it, everything's done in exercises. I talked about that. You know, done in class. Everything you're learning, we'll do it with you in class. You can ask questions as we go along. And then you'll get assignments to do it at home as well. And we'll come back and, and look at it. We'll create a safe environment. I created a thing called solution feedback, which is if you can't fix it, if you can't make it better, you can't improve it. You can't pitch a joke or a tag or something to help. Don't talk. <laughs> you, know, you, you, don't need, you don't need somebody going, oh, that joke didn't work, man. Take it out. What? I already stood there in the roar of silence. I know it doesn't work. Can you help me? <laughs> you don't just don't fear. need that. You just don't need that kind of stuff. So it's, you know, and the fixes, when we give you fixes with the techniques, we'll explain it to you. We're working, we're doing it this way. And this is the reason we're doing it this way. This is this technique. So the next time you run in this situation, you can do it yourself. Okay. Don't fear. Very, very important uh, element of that is we're always explaining what we do. Because uh, so uh, open uh, open mics, uh, 
Uh, used to be the only training. They aren't anymore. It's not that way anymore. Not since I started doing this. Used to be the only. I came up that way. Open mics. I used to be a street performer. Uh, any place I could go and pro, I wanted to perform so much. I taught myself to juggle and did some jokes and did did uh, uh, city parks in Modesto, California on weekends. Really? Because there's no place to perform. I used to go to city parks. So yeah. Then I got I'm around to uh, right now. All right. <laughs> Right. And so uh, here, so open mics are not the only way. That's the point. OK, they are one way and they part of the equation. You have to get experience. Question is, are you practicing good technique <clears throat> or bad technique? That's a real good question. Or what you're taking on. Uh, are you taking up your ideas on stage or are you actually taking on stage jokes? I go to open mics and 90% of the people, and once you understand joke structure, and it's one of the main things we teach here, once you understand it, how, you know, what, what constitutes a joke, so many other things, doors open for you, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, uh, Gayla, why don't you take over? Okay. Or, is that Kev or is that Kevin? I don't know. One of you two. Oh, well, you know what? I did one. Kevin, why don't you grab this one? Sure. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. So, you know, why should I take a class instead of doing open mics? Just to put it in short, open mics are the school of hard knocks. You know, fundamentals are the shortcut. That's where we're going to help you gain years. Our objective is to help you get to perform at five or more laughs per minute. That's the commodity you're aiming for. You can work if you can get five or more laughs per minute. We offer a safe place to be bad. You're get, and, but not only that, we give you solution feedback so you can improve without just hearing criticism. We also uh, give you support on and off stage. We have our whole Slack community, so you can run things by us and be a part of the whole community and get answers to your questions or have people help you with jokes. And you collaborate with experienced comedians. Many of the comedians that meet in our class have lifelong relationships or writing relationships. You can avoid developing bad habits. This is a big one I see a lot. A lot of open micers do the same bad things. Don't pick up on bad performing habits just because you're there. Greg's students move quickly past the open mic phase. They get booked into real good comedy rooms. You can't get from open mics what we can get you from 40 years of performing and teaching. We say it saves four to six years. I think it's fair to say it saves five years. And don't forget, you can sign up at any time. There is a discount code for 50 bucks off. You just enter 50 Greg off. We're, we're very lucky that the code doesn't have any other words other than 50 Greg off. I'm glad and, my name isn't Jack. <laughs> me too. And you can just follow the link. You can follow the link. The payment link is in chat right now. So I guess it comes back to me, huh, Kev? Yeah, back to Greg right now. Back to me. Okay, so understanding joke structure. I invented the term joke structure. There was no term called joke structure before I put it out there. So let me just go over a couple of things with this. Jokes, first of all, when I say joke structure, I mean a single unit of humor, us laughing at humor. People say, you mean one-liners? Yeah, I mean that. But I mean the jokes within a story, the jokes that are in a cartoon, huh, Tim? The, uh, uh, the, the jokes that are in sketches, in sitcoms, in movies, in, in books, uh, uh, mangas. I, I don't care. It, it, a joke is a joke is a joke is a joke. When you get down to the real center of what makes a joke a joke, it's the same in all jokes. And I know that's hard to believe right now. And it, 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 it transcends language and culture, which is the reason my book has been translated and is continuing to be translated into so many languages. They change the jokes, but they don't change the joke structure because it works in their language and their culture as well. And that took me 30 years to be able to have the nerve to say that publicly. Really, I really had to be sure before I'd make that claim. I make that claim now. So anyway, all jokes, uh, let me start with one fundamental, fundamentals. All jokes have two parts. That's the first thing you need to know. There's always two parts, okay? And there's three mechanisms that connect those two parts. That's when you know you have a joke, when there's a connection for those two parts, okay? Now, first of all, set up and punch are not joke structure. They are just the way we present 
One-liners, set up and punch. The comedian says all the parts to you. In storytelling, uh, that becomes a big problem of set up and punch because you've got so many points of view. You're, it, it's so much more elaborate, which we'll talk later. Jokes are the same. And they need to be structured and worked on the same. But they're, in, in storytelling, there's so much more complexity in the presentation. So many more skills you need to have to be a good storyteller rather than just do a one-liner. And once you understand joke structure, it's really the coolest thing in the world. First of all, you can identify what a joke is. What is a joke and what isn't a joke? Because jokes are... Uh, um, a specialized form of communication. They are a, they're like a haiku in poetry. You can't turn in a limerick when you're supposed to do a haiku, haiku and that's what people do with you. Jokes, they have, they have some requirements to make them jokes. Uh, and one in particular that will teach you, and once you get that, you'll, go, you'll be able to go, that's not a joke, and understand why. That's what that last guy was saying. Now I can explain to people why they're not funny. Yeah, you can. Because you'll understand what is a joke, okay? We can't guarantee that the audience will laugh, but what we can guarantee is what that you take on stage. What you take on stage are jokes. That's big. Because you go, I'll go watch the open mics. 90% of what's said is not a joke. Somebody then says a joke. The other night I was at a club and I saw a woman, uh, it was, she was given a guest spot or something. She did 10 minutes and she had no joke. She had one joke, got a big laugh. The rest of the time, nobody laughed. Tough. Next is fixed jokes. You know, once you see the fundamentals in the, how the mechanisms are working inside of a joke, something is expected and something's very unexpected. We rewrite jokes all the time because if the, something's really expected and then something's really unexpected of the two parts, right? One's expected, one's really unexpected. We just rework that joke. We try it from different points of view. We do all these different things. We rewrite it. And we can almost, I've always been able to take a good joke that, that it, it, at, the, at the center of it. You go, that, that's a really great idea and turn it into a usable joke that gets a laugh. On contrary to that is I've seen so many great jokes and people don't know how to write the joke and how to present the joke. They'll take these really good ideas for jokes that should be really funny and make them unfunny and not understand. It's just some information they need to know, what I call comedy grammar. They're putting too much information in it and the audience can't process uh, fast enough before you move on to the next idea and they're always behind. It's all these things that just kill jokes that are good ideas, they're, they should be good jokes. The last one here is the things from also understanding a joke structure is write jokes at will. I am not kidding. I can literally teach you to write jokes within five minutes. Once you understand joke structure, writing jokes is not difficult. Writing great jokes is difficult. Don't get me wrong. I can write a lot of it. You know, and, and the real belief for most co comedians and joke writers is a, a one out of 10. 10% is a good idea. You write a lot of stuff that it, that's good. It's okay. Ah, that's all right. You know, it's about 10% go smack. That's what you're looking for. You're gonna write a lot of okay jokes. The point is to understand that you're writing a joke and then you keep writing jokes and then you collect the ones that go pop. That's the ones that you wanna perform and put in your show and then make them even better with the, the performing techniques that we'll teach you as well. Next is the joke writing itself. Uh, joke writing. Uh, uh, you can wait for a bolt of lightning, this, you know, or you can write jokes at will. I can teach you. I've got a joke writing system called the Joke Prospector. We're going to teach this to you. It is the only system in the world that teaches you to go from nothing to a completed joke. Steps. Take the steps and you will, and we'll take it to you in two parts. First, we're going to teach you how to write great setups and the comedy grammar of writing them. And then we'll teach you how to write setups and then write punches for those setups. So we'll take you through the whole system. No one else teaches this because it's mine. It's, I invented this some, oh, two, 12, 30 years ago, and I've been perfecting it ever since. You can also learn telling funny stories by getting up and telling the story. And we'll talk about that later about filling in jokes, how to rant, how to pick something and rant and then turn that into a routine, okay? One-liner jokes, learn how to write them, make observations. Observation jokes already exist. You just gotta snatch them out of the world and learn how to present them to the audience. That's why they're called observation jokes. 
You don't have to write them. You just have to recognize them. Oh, wow. A whole lot of interesting ideas here. Uh, Kev, is there a, did, are we leaving that person out for a reason? Which person out? Uh, no, I don't. I, okay. I got I, it. Uh, then. I didn't That's see fine. anybody. Didn't see All right. Anybody. Cool. All right. So this is one of my students, Armando Anto. Uh, don't know why a world-class vinylist would want to stop doing that and become a comedian, but he did. And he is. And he became a, uh, a paid uh, headliner within a year and three months of taking my class. And they asked him how he did it. Anyway, here he is. Yeah, we'll talk about him in a minute. So here he is doing, you know, and you just see he knows where his jokes are because he's waiting for the laughs. That's part of it. You got to know where your jokes are so you, can, so you can shut up. Let the audience laugh. Don't kill the laugh by, by talking through it. Here we go. I'm going to play uh, a sad love song. Uh, and it means my love for you is eternal. I can actually oh, wow. That's <laughs> he was a violinist he understood the importance of technique to ask him how did you become a headline he said i just did everything greg told me to do greg taught me i actually worked and did and worked on him worked on him and worked on him and and he also got himself a mentor and did all the things we said to do with a mentor and and blah blah and he studied with me for a year he put the money into it and then and now he, he's uh, just finished his second special hour he's just finished working on his second hour of material yeah because he knows how to write and he did all the things. He collaborates with other comedians that I've trained and they all get together every week and write each other's shows. Oh, you know, so he's smart man and he applied it and he had the discipline. So he's doing great. Oops, don't start again, just move on. Improving jokes, I love this part of it. This is one of the things you can really do. Uh, there are many reasons jokes get, don't get laughs. Uh, you know, you need to pro know the proper ways to write them. First of all, you need to identify if it is a joke, <laughs> that sounds weird, but a lot of people put stuff up and they're not jokes. They need to be jokes. They, they need to be rewritten to be concise. You don't want more than one idea in your setups and pay, one idea to one idea. That's the thing is you put too many ideas in it. Well, let me share one secret with you. For an audience to get a joke, it's a mental process for them. You're thinking of a joke as a thing, but for an audience's mind, it's a mental process that they get the information and they go through all of these, these processes and stuff. And I've documented those. And there's 25 steps the mind goes through in order to get the setup and then understand and laugh at the punch. 25 steps. That's what the ones I've documented and I've, I've got uh, that we've done with this. Uh, it, you put in too much information, they can't resolve the incongruity or the conflict between the setup and the punch. It just gets lost and people don't realize that. Okay, writing it concisely, eliminated cl comics cliches. Oh my God, if one more, I can see one more comic start their show by going, hi, how you all doing this evening? You'll see, uh, uh, go to an open mic, there'll be 30 of them and they'll all get up and go, hi, how you all doing this evening? That's a comics cliche. Find out all those little phrases that comics say all the time and don't say them because that's the fastest road to hack them. Hackville, okay, so exploring jokes as scenes. When you stop thinking about, about as a line of dialogue and start seeing them as a scene, you can explore that word. You get one joke, but then you can explore inside that world and find a whole lot of jokes. Okay, and you're gonna learn how to apply comedy grammar. That's something that I've also invented. Laid down these like six rules for, for writing setups and six rules for writing punches that make them simple and concise. And most of them are actually derived from what I call the mental processing of a joke. What are the things that are keeping the audience from? Because you don't want it the audience to ever think. You want them to respond. 
You don't want them to have to figure out any much of anything. You want them to respond. The more they have to sit and figure something out, when they finally figure out the joke, they usually go, oh, huh. hmm, clever. That's not the response I want. I want, to, I want them to laugh so hard their forehead hits the table. And I want that instant response. That's why it's called a punch. Instant response. Not they have to mull it over for a while. And again, people clutter up jokes very badly. Uh, creating strong premises. This is huge. Um, first of all, premise in the dictionary is a statement from which we develop a further argument. That's the technical definition of a premise. Okay. Okay, and, and, and in comedy, that, that uh, developing a further argument, those are the jokes. <laughs> you come out and state your premise, and then you prove your premise, essentially, by a bunch of jokes. This is what I'm going to talk about. Here's my position. Here's a bunch of jokes that represent it, and you move on. Okay? You need to learn how to write proper premises, because most stand-up comedy routines, not one-liners, but routines, storytelling, bits, observations, political, they'll start with a routine. They'll start with a premise. They start with a premise. The routines start with a premise. Okay, you state your premise at the top so the audience knows. It keeps the routine on track. It tells the audience what to expect. Okay. It establishes your comedy voice because you're constantly, you're learning, oh, I I'm, I'm seem to be talking about this all the time. And here's a value that I have or a belief system that I'm talking about now. That's when the comic voice starts to come forward, et cetera. Here's Peter Kay, does a great job. Right at the top of this, he tells you what his routine is going to be about. And basically, you don't really know the words to the songs, okay, until you see them in karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you, you, you're singing these songs. You don't know the words then in karaoke. Or in, he'll, he'll explain it. He'll, it's self-explanatory. Here we go. You all know about karaoke. When you're singing on a karaoke, you haven't got a clue that those were words. I was singing, um, take that back for good. Wash your back. Wash your back. Wash your back. Want your back? What's this? Want your back? I've been singing, wash your back 15 years. It's only when you go on a karaoke and you see lyrics, that's what they're supposed to be singing. You know that song, We Are Family? For years I thought they were singing, Just Let Me Staple the Vicar. Right? <laughs> who's right and who's wrong here? Listen. All of the people around us, they say, Can they be that close? Just let me staple the vicar. <laughs> That's what they sing. Just let me staple. The vicar. What's all that about? Just let me stay for the vicar. So, it <laughs> makes me laugh. Sorry, let me come back on. That makes me laugh every time it says, how many years? Now, if you don't know, the actual line is, let, just let me state for the record. <laughs> That's a real thing. But when they're singing it, he and and by the way, this this if you want to see Peter Kay, I've been watching him for years. He's really great. He has like eight other examples of this. This is only one. He has all these other songs where you thought that's what you were they, you thought you were singing, uh, knew the word, and he just shows you you didn't, you know, and and points out some you didn't even ever realize. Anyway, point is he is clear about his premise. Then he does a routine that follows. That is all the jokes are just examples of that premise. When you understand that, now you're learning how to present clear communication to an audience. You're communicators. You're not just, you know, you're comedians, but you're communicators. You're communi got to be clear to the audience of what you're talking about. Oh, speak <laughs> All right. Developing material. Lots of ways to develop material. You can, you know, learn to play with others. Several... Uh, you get more, basically, you just get more jokes when you work with other people because you have a lot of different perspectives. Every one of you here has a different way you look at life because your background and your culture and your values, you know, and you will look at the same idea somebody's looking at and come up with a different idea for a joke. So, hey, let's work together. So we're going to teach you how to uh, write within groups. That's part of the solution feedback and not criticism. You're always pitching, you know, learning how to collaborate, learn how to pitch jokes, pitch tags, pitching sessions, learn how to do it, learn how to do act outs, get up and act outs. There's so many. We're going to teach you five different ways of developing material. Five. Some of them are writing. Some of them are not writing. Not everybody sits down with pen and paper and writes jokes. 
Some people do. Some people, my belief is both. <laughs> learn how to write a joke and work on it on paper and also learn how to generate it uh, material in all these other ways and collaborate with other people. You don't have to be in it alone. That's the whole thing. So, Gayla, this is your turn. You're on. All righty then, I'm here. Let's do this. Um, what sets us apart? This is interesting. Sometimes uh, people come from other comedy classes and they want to know why are we different? What sets us apart? Well, first of all, we teach techniques. We don't teach opinion. We don't teach opinions. Um, and opinion is a really great thing. So you can just keep it to yourself and use it for your own voice. Our techniques replace the need to tell you our opinion. Our teachers are certified in Greg Dean's system. We have we have several teachers. We have at least four teachers that, that teach different classes and hold uh, you know, different kinds of events that we have. Um, we'll talk about that. We have office hours and other things and they all are certified. We have a proven step-by-step -step technique system. It, it, it's all born of Greg's workbook, which you can buy online on, on uh, Amazon. It's a step-by-step -step to stand comedy. I showed you that in the beginning. Those step-by-step -step techniques is what we have proven. Anthony Jeselnik, uh, Sherry Shepard, Whoopi Goldberg, a lot of people have used his techniques. We give solution feedback, not criticism. Criticism is, it doesn't help anyone. No one is at their best when being criticized and we don't criticize. Our solutions are based in techniques. We have no censorship in the class. You can talk about anything except clear and present danger. That just means, you know, you can't yell fire uh, in a movie house, but you can yell movie house in a firehouse, um, if you guys know the difference. And so clear and present danger, we try to avoid that sort of humor development, but otherwise no censorship at all. You can talk about anything. So here's how we run the class down, uh, building a routine 101. We have five weeks with you. Um, we start off class one joke structure, which is something we're going over here a little bit. Um, joke writing, Greg has a joke writing technique uh, that he'll explain different ver different parts of it throughout the five weeks. We go over joke writing, set up punch beyond that, way beyond that. We have four principles of stand-up comedy that we want to share with you. These are principles and basic guidelines to know on your own track with skills and technique. Remind yourself of these principles and you'll be doing well. Uh, we will have you performing on the first week, premise and ranting. We, uh, the, we emphasize and teach the importance of having a premise in your, in your show. It gives us a, a sort of a bookends to what you're talking about, lets the audience know where you're going. Then we kind of remind you that we encourage uh, writing 10 minutes a day. We give you a little assignment, <clears throat> assignment that reflects the, uh, what you've learned in that class one. And you bring that in for class two. And then we, we also encourage you to write for 10 minutes a day on your comedy techniques and comedy homework assignments. Uh, class two, you see those little red arrows? That means we review what we taught every week. We review the week before. So we open up the class with premise and ranting. Then we go into the assignment review, whatever was assigned in class one. It's not written there, but you'll get an assignment from class one. We go over joke writing again because we have another technique. Sometimes... Uh, people can write jokes easily from a setup to punch, but sometimes you write from punch to setup. So that's a whole different way of writing. We talk about another technique of writing. Now, then we talk about telling funny stories, the skills that go into telling funny stories and how to take a story and add those skills into it, those techniques and writing jokes for how to tell a funny story. We remind you about the 10 minutes a day assignment, which is really a good habit to have as you devote time to your comedy journey and writing and expressing yourself through stand-up. We give you another little assignment. We review that assignment class three, telling funny stories, assignment review, and then we go into jokes and storytelling. Now that's different than telling funny stories because jokes and storytelling has to do with the presentation of your story. That's when we open it up to a lot more skill set than just telling funny stories with jokes. Now we're going into presentation, which is how do you show the audience your story and how do you keep their attention uh, by, you may not say a funny thing, but you may do a funny thing. So they don't want to take their eyes off of you. We go into the rehearsal process, which is very important because how you rehearse is how you'll perform. You have to know a technique for rehearsal in your show. 
Again, we remind you of that assignment 10 minutes a day. So you can work on that habit every day and get more comfortable with writing on your, on your, on your uh, homework assignments and your, your voice and your comic, all your comic material. Class four is kind of fun. It's all rehearsal and performance. It's really fun. You get up, you rehearse your, we, we go over the rehearsal process. We help you rewrite your routine, your comedy routine, your jokes that you're coming up with, the things that you want to write jokes about. We rehearse your routine. We get into performing a little bit in your routine and we tweak that even with solution feedback. We give you the assignment again and for next for the final class and 10 minutes a day. Then we start off with a screen share or we start off working on your, your routine, the words, the way you structured it. We rewrite it, solution feedback. We want to repeat that. This is for the class. This is everybody collaborating together, giving solutions and tweaking each other on uh, feedback. This is how students get together and start doing writing groups because they, they know how to fix jokes. Uh, then we rehearse your routine and then we perform with more feedback, which is gonna just uh, further tighten your show. All this is getting you ready to move into the 201 class where you take that one minute and you build from there to a three minute set and then to a five and then to a seven. So yeah, this is exciting. <laughs> Oh, we're back to this for sure. You guys, for you know, now's your time. Uh, turn your dreams into reality. Click on the payment link in chat. We have a discount for you. We have $50 off the class. The class is normally, you know, $399, but 50 Greg off is your coupon code. Uh, you put that into your registration when you start to register and you get the $50 discount. All right, back to Greg right here. Here we Yay. go. Yeah, that was just a short little commercial. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Gayla. Thank you. That was very nice. All right. So uh, telling funny stories. We're back to this whole thing here. And oh, by the way, the, 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 look at the flow of that class. What we're doing is, again, we're teaching you all the things you need to know to develop a routine, not just develop it, know how it, oh, the jokes and the joke writing and the storytelling and the rehearsing, uh, rewriting and rewriting the jokes right with you. We're there doing it with you. It's, it's, we're doing all these things with you, rewriting them, showing you why and how. By the end, you know how you put to, that, that routine together. So if you can put a one minute routine together at a professional level, you could put two, you could put three, you could put 15, you could do a half an hour. It just takes time. Oh, and stand-up comedy uh, routines are developed over time. They're not just written, they're developed. Uh, that's one of the misnomers. People say, write a routine. You, you, that's one, just one of the skills. So one of the other skills is telling funny stories. One-liners are only one way to communicate a joke. What's funny, storytelling is a very complex way of sharing your humor. There are so many more skills you've got to learn. First, you're dealing with situations. You're not just dealing with, oh, a single joke. You're dealing with a situation that a lot of things can happen in it. You need to portray the characters that are in there and watch, do the character. You're doing scenes, you're doing act outs, okay? How do you move into them? How do you move out of them? How do you stage them? How do you do it? Make sure everybody knows what's going on, knows who's talking. Well, you know, the, and you need to write jokes and structure jokes inside of storytelling, which is very different than presenting a one-liner. OK, because the jokes come at you from different angles. The character could be a joke. The situation can be a joke. What you say can be a joke. A physical bit you're doing can be the joke. In storytelling, there's so many more skills involved than just delivering a joke. So that's why it's really helpful because, again, it's about clear communication. I've seen people with really good jokes and bad, bad staging and don't know how, how to present it properly and things just a mess and nobody's laughing. I look at it and go, wow, man, that, that, that bit should be just crushing it. But, you know, they, they, you know, they don't understand. There's a class where you can learn that stuff. It's technique. It's technical. It's not creativity. It's not intelligence. It's not about being funny. It's not any of those things. It's about learning fundamentals, just like you would if you would learn from a music teacher or from a sports coach or whomever. Learn those fundamentals. That's what we do. So telling funny stories. Here's John Mulaney. We'll talk about what, watch his funny story. Notice he does a lot of things. He acts out people. He does things. 
He does some mime running. He, uh, he does, uh, you know, what they call space work. He does a bunch of other things, okay? And we'll talk about that in a minute. I'm changing between subway trains, right? And it's 2 o'clock in the morning, okay? And you have to walk down this long corridor in order to change trains. 2 o'clock in the morning, it's just me and this woman. And she's walking a few yards ahead of me. And we're walking down. And she starts giving me, like, the over-the-shoulder, like that, you know? Like, look at me. And then she starts to pick up the pace. She starts to walk a lot faster. So I think, oh, she must hear the train coming. You know, or she feels it in her feet, like a Native American in a movie. So I start to sprint down the hallway at her, and she looks back and she's like, ah! And then she gives chase, so now we're like booking it down the corridor at two o'clock in the morning, and I'm gaining on her. I'm gaining on her, and we're getting to the end of the hallway, and she's going into that like dead end shuffle, you know, that women do when you chase them. And I'm almost there. I'm almost at her, and then it dawns on me. Oh, she's running from me. Because in her eyes, I'm an adult. And adults rape each other. He is doing a lot of stuff here. First of all, just as a kind of a, just so that you notice it and stuff. There, there at the end when he goes, uh, she sees me as an adult. That's a joke on his character because he's so young looking. And, you know, it, it, that, that the setup is him being, looks like a 12 year old. Oh, she sees me like an adult. Oh, that's a joke that comes from his character. Okay, so let's look at this story. This story is pretty simple. He's walking down in a subway late at night. A woman starts walking faster. He starts walking faster with her. Thinking she hears the train. She panics and runs. Okay, that's the story. <laughs> that's it. That's the story. You know, he finally catches up with her, realizes, oh, she, she was running from me. She didn't hear the train. That's the story. Okay, so... We're going to tell you, she teach you how to fill routines with jokes. Again, single unit of humor. Where we're laughing at humor, we're laughing at a joke. Okay, there are dozens of places in a show that are begging for laughs. And there's dozens of techniques, dozens of techniques we can teach you for filling in those jokes. Okay, he started. So part of this is to explain to you, you don't have to start with the whole routine. You start with an idea. He started with an idea. Oh, that's funny. This woman was running from me, uh, running to catch a train. And I realized, oh, she's running from me. That's the, that's, the, that's, that's the story. That's where he started. He's got this whole two, three minute bit that now he does. It's very, very funny. Okay. So up here in the upper right hand corner, a little graphic's going to come in and say added jokes. So you can start to see where I really believe he added jokes from the original story. We're going to play it again. Just check it out. Notice you don't have to write it all or come in with it all. We develop it in class with you. I'm changing between subway trains, right? And it's two o'clock in the morning, okay? And you have to walk down this long corridor in order to change trains. Two o'clock in the morning, it's just me and this woman. And she's walking a few yards ahead of me. And we're walking down. And she starts giving me, like, the over-the-shoulder, like that, you know? Like, look at me. And then she starts to pick up the pace. She starts to walk a lot faster. So I think, oh, she must hear the train coming. You know, or she feels it in her feet, like a Native American in a movie. So I start to sprint down the hallway at her, and she looks back and she's like, ah! And then she gives chase, so now we're like booking it down the corridor at two o'clock in the morning, and I'm gaining on her. I'm gaining on her, and we're getting to the end of the hallway, and she's going into that like dead end shuffle, you know, that women do when you chase them. And I'm almost there. I'm almost at her, and then it dawns on me. Oh, she's running from me. Because in her eyes, I'm an adult. And adults rape each other. 
There you go. Very, very simple story gets developed into a long routine with a lot of laughs, act outs, characters, all kinds of things, you know, because there's a lot of tools in storytelling. But as you learn them, then you can easily, you know, we'll teach you, teach them to you so you can practice them, use them at will and use them on your sense of humor, on your story. Again, it's not how we want a story to be told or what story we want. We don't care. We just want you to fill it full of jokes and make sure it's clearly communicated with proper technique. Once you learn it, it stays with you for a lifetime. Then you're always doing it. So uh, the next thing is organizing jokes into routines. You end up with a lot of different jokes from different places and stuff. So what do you do with all those jokes? Okay. Well, I say you need to know your BCAs. Here you go. Here's how you do it. Yeah, B material, you, you open with your B material. Okay. C material, you put in the middle because it's the weakest and you close with your best material. Okay. Your A material. Why? Because you don't want to start with your A material because you might can't follow yourself. You don't want to start with your crap material because you won't get the audience. You start with your second best to get them. Put your weakest stuff in the middle and close out with your, because the audience, and I've seen some research on this as well on paper that I read. I read a lot of stuff uh, that, that the last thing people the last things you do is what they remember, you know, because you could do an okay show and then the last two minutes, you just completely crush it. They'll go, I took them a minute to get going, but he or she, they were hilarious. You reverse it and you're hilarious at the beginning and then it goes, peters out a little bit low. Well, if we counted those last for a minute, they'd be the same. Ah, but the impression is just the opposite. So we always want to be able to be able to learn how to end with your funniest bit. And, it's, and, and there's a secret. It's usually the sex material. Back when I was coming up, we called it dick jokes. But now because so many women are in the field, which I think is fabulous, now we call it end with the sex material. So there we go. A change of time and a change of language. Manage your stage fright. Wow, this is huge. We're saying manage it. We're not saying go away. We're not going to say stop it. I'll manage it. Learn how to manage it. You know, you, you don't want the butterflies to go away. You just want them to fly in formation. <laughs> you want that, that energy to be an asset on stage instead of it. It's the thing that's holding you back. It's the thing that helps you be a great performer. And that's learning to manage it. And there's there's things to do and things to know about that that we'll talk with you and work with you on. First is a uh, fear of the unknown. That's what they find that, that, that most people are, are uh, have. It, the fear of the unknown is what holds people back. So we set up our classrooms. So we repeat in, cl in class a lot, get up and perform and do stuff. And so you're getting to know what it's like to perform and get in front of people, even though it's on Zoom or whatever, it's you, you're doing it and you're doing it. And you go, oh, after a while, it's like, oh, I'm not, I didn't die. <laughs> Nothing happened, the war didn't start. You know, I just, did, oh, this isn't as bad. That's what happens. You just, at some point you kind of go, I'm still nervous, but that's not, it's, you know, it's not life threatening or anything compared to that. So fear of the unknown, helping you get past the unknown part. The next one, and this is really, I found was the most powerful one, was when people feel unprepared, they feel scared. Okay. To answer so that you, when you go on stage, you feel prepared. That's what we're doing. This whole class that we're talking about, this routine 101 class, is all about to prepare you to get on stage, to do your show a bunch of times with us so we can help you to rewrite the show over and over. Again, you end up with the short routine. You know how it's put together. You know where your jokes are. You, you know you've practiced taking the pause, right? Letting the audience laugh, coming back in, picking it back up. I mean, all those things. So you learn joke structure. You learn all these ways of writing jokes. We help you put it together. You learn the, the ways to stage storytelling properly and how to write the jokes for storytelling, which are more complex and there's more. And, so, and then we practice and we rewrite it and we help you rehearse it. And then we, boom, then you perform. And in those, those, I, I, those final two days when you're not just performing at once, 
I'm going to have you what I call practice performing. You're going to do that short show over and over and over, right there with us. We're going to work with you. So you get used to going through that show and feeling real comfortable with it. That's feeling prepared. And that will give you the confidence, the courage to get on stage. All right. The courage to get on stage when you have never Many of my students never have performed ever in their entire lives. Actually, I prefer that because the ones that did a bunch of open mics usually come in with a bunch of bad habits that I spend a lot of time undoing. And it's those bad habits are actually holding them back or they're thwarting the good jokes they've got. The jokes are not, not, get, not getting the laughs they should get because of bad habits they learn from other comics uh, because they don't know these things. They learn them from other people and... You know, and, and that's fine. That's one way to learn. And open mic's another way to learn. Or you can kind of somebody who's been doing this for 40 years, who's been compiling all the stuff that works and then presenting it to you in a matter of weeks. <laughs> you're not going to master it in a matter of weeks, but you're going to know what it is. So you can practice good technique and go on stage with jokes. And it's going to make a huge difference in your response. So this is Alex. He came to me. He was he didn't know what he's doing, never performed in his life, terrified. He talks about a little bit of stage fright. This guy was shaken. He was, you know, he had no idea what a joke was. He didn't know anything about jokes. And he wanted to do some jokes about his father and a few other things. That's what he came and asked us for. So this is what after this, after this, after the 101 class, this is after the 101 class, this is what he was doing. But I think I got a lot of good material in my head that uh, I could write with, but uh, I just got to get over a little bit of stage fright. Yeah, Alex! All right, thanks everybody for supporting Virtual Comedy. It's my first time doing this. Uh, you know, this all feels like a dream to me, but I think that's because I ate and ate the mushrooms before the show. <laughs> you know, I might start to see trails, so just forgive me. Be with me. <laughs> uh, I just went uh, camping on a six-week camping vacation, living in a tent for six weeks. I was homeless in Skid Row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i uh i had a mental health incident i had to move back in with my parents <laughs> <laughs> it's okay though you know it's not a bad thing my mom's a good cook problem is she cooks crystal meth <laughs> 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 yeah my dad always said i was a good my ass was good for nothing so i started smuggling heroin in my anus <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got my unemployment. Oh, fuck, I just fucked up. I think it's because oh. I smoked too much weed. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a pay raise. Yeah, I got my unemployment check. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a gender reveal party. They called the cops to me because I was the only one to reveal my gender. <laughs> now i'm not going to say every every joke he did was a great joke or whatever some of them i thought that that closing joke i think is a killer joke you know went to a gender reveal party and cops called him kind of called the cops on me because i was the only one revealed my gender I, any pro would do that joke uh, and just several of his others as well, but a lot of them come from his own life. You know, his problems with his family. He was homeless for a while. He was, this are jokes from his life. Uh, that's what we teach you. Take what you know. It's your life. It's your jokes and stuff. But he started knowing nothing. And I think that's pretty amazing for after a few weeks of training, he goes from zero to this. Uh, and he messed up and he learned the other lesson that we teach him, which is be present and, and play. Oh, you mess up. Don't be beating yourself up. Play. Have some fun with it and then keep going. Oh, he did that. Hello. So no big deal. It's no big, you know, he learned, oh, God, it's no big deal. I just you know, pick up the joke, do it, do it a little differently than I thought I was going to do it. And keep going. Really nice. Finally, and this is what he got, was performing with confidence. You, you should see him his first week, man. This guy was terrified. This is a kind of guy confident. He's he's confident. He's he's prepared. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He's prepared. He feels good about this show. He knows their jokes. He knows where they are. He's put them together. He's rewritten them and rewritten them and rewritten them and performed them and rehearsed them and did all. The, he knows where his laughs are. That's why he pauses for them. OK, so how do you perform with confidence? Here's a big secret. Confidence is earned. 
It is not something you get as a present. It's earned. People say to me, oh, I'll perform when I get some confidence. That person is never going to perform because perform comes from, confidence comes from doing. Doing the things here, okay? How do you get to that confidence? Complete your assignments, damn 10 minutes a day. That's going to get you prepared, okay? Use the teacher's feedback. Oh, it drives us crazy. We give somebody all the perfect feedback, tight, chup, tight, chup, tight up their jokes, do this, do that, all that kind of stuff. They bring it the next week, and all the same problems are still there. Oh, help them do all those things again. And the third week, those problems are still there. Oh, man. You take care of those things as if from use the stuff the teachers teach you. I guarantee you that show's going to get tighter and better and better. And again, that's what gives you confidence and feeling prepared. You know, prepare your in-class performances, okay? Just people, you, you, you know, if you, oh, I didn't really work on it. Giving yourself a, an excuse and an out. Well, then, okay, fine. But you've just given yourself an excuse and an out. Oh, I didn't really try. Wasn't it my best? Yeah, okay, you've been saying that her whole life. When does that stop? Okay, when does that stop? Okay, you can do that for the rest of your life or you can take a step into this, into this realm now and, and learn these things. Attend weekly office hours. We have three hours of office hours on three different days. You're welcome to attend those for free. You can do anything you want in those offers. You can ask us questions. You can help get help with your assignments. You can ask somebody about your jokes. You can, it's office hours. Come in, talk, ask about the industry. I don't know, whatever you think you need to know. We give you unprecedented access to us as teachers. Other classes just don't do this. We handle it more like a university. We're teaching you this stuff. We do it with you. Then we go, okay, then if you're confused or something, you've got other ways of, of, of getting a hold of us and stuff. So you can ask questions at, at so and so. Do the open mics. We offer three open mics a week. Come into the open mic and go, I just wanted to say, I'm, a, I'm doing the open mic and then leave. I don't care. <laughs> it's an open mic. It's not supposed to be good even though ours are pretty darn good. Kevin is the MC for him and he's terrific. He makes it play and fun and uh, it makes it at ease. Cause again, there's no criticism. We're not there. We're not there to humiliate you and stuff. We're there to give you opportunities to attain your dreams and, and get to where you want to go. Not where we want you to go. We're, we're trying to help you articulate your sense of humor in this show so that you feel prepared and confident and you can get up and start performing. And the more you perform, the better you'll get at it. So this whole class is about building a, a routine with five plus laughs per minute. That's a professional level, by the way. You don't, you don't, you, and we're, we're starting at that level there. You can go up to eight, nine. At some point you can't pack more laughs into a minute because it's continuous laughter. How, you know, I'm telling you when you start, you start working at this level and we can do this because we've done it over and over. I've been doing it for 40 years and it's, it, it's just learning how to help people do these things. You know, Alex, Alex, I think that was a 30 second clip, what it may be 45 second clip. There was what, six, seven, eight jokes in, in that, that 45 second. That wasn't even a full minute, I don't think. So I'm saying this guy crafted, it's crafted. It's crafted. <laughs> this was not an accident. There was no moment in that show that was an accident. <laughs> and if it was an accident from somewhere, then it was crafted into the show from there. So I'm just saying, this is all doable. It's a you know, comedy. Let me just make a quick distinction. And I'm going to turn over to Gala here for a moment. The craft of comedy. I can teach it to you. Teach you the craft. I can teach you the techniques, the mechanisms, the principles. I can teach them. I can practice them with you. The exercises. We can go over them, over them, over and over and with them. And you're starting to get good at them, et cetera, et cetera. The art of being funny. We can't teach it. You can learn it through trial and error and a lot of stage time. You got to put in that stage time. But the question is, are you practicing bad technique and, and not knowing what you're doing on stage and, and wandering around trying to figure something out? Or are you taking, when you take those psychological risks and put yourself out there, is, is, what, you, is what you're performing jokes? Is it a well put together show? Is it good technique that's going to help you get better and better and better? Or are you just kind of wandering around not knowing what you're doing? So that's up to you. <clears throat> We're giving you an opportunity here to join us 
if you want to, to get to that place. But you have to take the step. We've taken, given you, you've gotten this far. Question is, is the next step? It's yours to take if you want to take it. So uh, I'm going to turn you over to the illustrious Gayla Johnson. Here she is. Ah, illustrious. I can't even spell that. Okay, here we go. Cool, guys. Uh, class includes, uh, this is all the goodies you get and more uh, that we just haven't put down here, but free PDF handouts for the assignments. So these PDFs come from or are inspired by Greg Dean's book, the step-by-step, uh, -step, sorry, step-by-step -step to stand-up comedy. Um, we give you that in the class as it pertains to each week of study that we have for you. Uh, the PDF. We give you Zoom support and training. We do that through some things we've set up called office hours. You can get on Zoom and talk to someone for an hour. Uh, well, also, we have direct messaging and also we have students uh, accountability study groups and things like that. You can do a makeup or re review the class on video. Um, every week we record our Zoom classes and it's available to you uh, 10 days after you've taken the class. So you can review your own class on video and then it's gone because we have to make room for the next recording for each week. So each week you can take the class, review the class, you know, to kind of get more information on what you might have missed if you were um, wanting to restudy some of the same assignments. Weekly office hours for help on assignments, direct messaging to students and teachers, membership in our global stand-up community, and free weekly open mics. There's a lot of different things to explain to you there, but each one is all about support, continued support, and continued um, coaching uh, in your comedy journey and on your work and on your and on your uh, jokes and your writing. You can join us. We start next week. Classes start Tuesday, June 29th, uh, right here on Zoom, 7 to 10 p.m. local time. That's LA time. Um, uh, five weeks, so it's five uh, Tuesdays in a row, uh, limited to 15 seats or less. Uh, we have like seven or five. I have to check our update. Uh, maybe there's more or less uh, available now. But we only take a certain number. We don't want a huge, big class. We want time to get to know you personally and get to give you time to learn and ask questions in the class. So sometimes we limit it to 10 people. It just, just all depends. Tonight, you can register. As you have seen throughout, um, you can always just go to the website and register. Here's what's at the website. Two ways to pay. The full rate of the class is $3.99. It's been $3.99 before COVID. It was $3.99 last year, year before that. $50 discount code is 50 Greg off. So we give you a $50 discount. $3.49 is your total rate. You're done. Um, it's only $58 off through $49. If you want a payment plan, we have that for you. We've had requests for that. So that's $99.75. $99.75 a week. You pay for four weeks. It's a debit, automatic debit from your account. It's through PayPal and um, you get to pay as you go kind of thing uh, where you don't have to come off with a lump at the beginning. You end up paying more, but you got the convenience of the four weeks. So that's pretty cool too. And this being a five week class, you know, you pretty much pay throughout the class. So we have a QA and a after this. Um, Stick around. I hope your questions have been in Slack. We're going to bring those back and try to get Greg to answer some of those questions. Click on the payment link again. Here it is. It's in chat. The code 50 Greg off standupcomedy.com uh, slash class. Put that in your browser. You can check out that uh, on our website and more on our website. So let's go back to Greg and go to the question Q and A. Um, hey, okay. So uh, that's our big pitch. You know, no big a, pressure. Now we're just gonna hang out with you guys. So we have a hand, a hand up over here, uh, Vito Lover. Uh, yeah, yeah, Vito. <laughs> Vito Laverdi. Yeah. Okay. Don't fear, Vito's here. <laughs> okay. What's your question, Vito? Oh, um. You, you guys are my bucket list. Let's say that. Um, I've. Uh, nice to, nice done, to know that you'll join us just before you die. Yeah. Uh, and that could, good. Be, that could be any day now. <laughs> yeah. Me personally, I don't have a bucket list. I have a fuck it list. Oh. You know, after a while, you start realizing all these things you just ain't going to fucking get to. You know, it's <laughs> like, oh, I'm never going to learn macrame, you know? Yeah, All right. I'm kind of so, like. Uh, what, what's a, what's a, uh, what was your question, Vito? They call me the Italian storyteller. 
I'm I'm Italian descent, and I've had a lot of fun. Named Vito? No. Vito, Vito in a speedo eating a burrito. All right. Oh, Vito, what's your question? I've just uh, I'm, I've always kicked this around. I've always been a joker sent to the principal's office most of the time for being a smart ass. So I used to tell the teacher, well, at least I'm a smart ass. I'd rather be a smart ass than a dumb shit. So anyways, uh, I've all, I go to a gym. I work out. And I, What's your I, question, Vito? Um, <laughs> we're I we're getting get, your resume. What's your question? <laughs> uh, I just want to uh, find out what's, when the uh, latest class I can join, how, uh, because it's going to take me a while to get some money together. Okay. But it's, it's, it's something that I think I would like to do. That and sounds great. I, I tell you, know. you what, Gala, why don't you go into a breakout room with Vito, Kev, and put him there, and then you can have a personal chat with Gala about all those logistical things. How's that, Vito? Okay, I appreciate you. Thank all you right. very much for this program. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, you spend some time with Gala, and uh, she'll answer all your questions about, about uh, what you need to know. Any other questions? Was there anybody else? Yes. Uh, please. Unmute. Um, there you go. Right. Thank you. Um, I just have a question. I'm from Mexico. I perform here in Mexico. I've yep. tried already a few open mics. So what is your experience with international students? Like if I take this course, mm -hmm. How I've never done stand up in, in English, so again, all of my techniques transcend language and culture. Look up a guy named Richard Villa, you know how it's spelled Villa, Villa, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, he's one of my students, he does an hour in, in English and in Spanish, he's fairly well known in all of Latin America. Once you do Mexico City, and he was touring with God, what's that guy's name? The most famous uh comedian in Mexico, he's touring Franco with him. He was touring with him. And anyway, he, uh, I just saw him the other day at a club, uh, ran into him again. I see him all the time. Anyway, he, he, you know, he, he basically, I have actually a testimonial from him saying, hey, it works English, Spanish, doesn't really matter because <laughs> the techniques are the techniques. The sense of humor is different when you mm -hmm. change cultures and language, as I'm sure you're aware from American, right? And also, yeah. it's different from Mexican and Spanish, too, right, uh, et cetera. And even you go further down to Central and you know, Costa Rican, is, you know, I mean, so there's all these little variations. That's the difference is the cultural assumptions. The techniques are exactly the same. That's why my book has been translated into so many languages. Joke structure is joke structure. Uh, learning how to tell a story and stage it properly and communicate it clearly, et cetera is exactly the same in Spanish. That's why Richard, it, he stayed for like for a year. And then at the end of that year, he was working so much, he had to quit the class. He loved the class. Now he, the, uh, when he's in class, he goes back to a writing group that, uh, my, that he and some of my other students formed. And that's been going on for eight years or something like that. So uh, look up Richard Villa uh, and email him, talk to him. Really good guy. He's, you know, he's pretty open to things. He, he mentored one of my students. Etc. So and got that guy, you know, a lot of good work and stuff. So the point is, if I've answered your question, <laughs> the class is the class. It, it, these techniques are are universal. Uh, okay. So it, it, you know, again, now you have to learn how to apply them, and and sometimes help us. Sometimes you'll have to say, no, that that's funny, in 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 Mexican, you know, in the you know, that that's funny here because we might not see the joke. Okay because mm -hmm. of cultural differences, language differences, et cetera, et cetera. You have to say, no, no, that's a joke. I had somebody do that the other day. He was, had some information about something and I, I don't see the joke. He explained it to me and I went, what a great joke. <laughs> I just didn't have what I call the common knowledge. I didn't, neither did anybody else. So once he explained it, it was a little inside information that he had and it was a great joke. Just because we didn't have the common knowledge doesn't mean it was a, wasn't a great joke. It was a great joke. It's just one I couldn't get until I had that knowledge. So you have to be strong and say in Spanish, when I'm doing this joke is funny. So that when we're helping you, 
et cetera, because, uh, you know, sometimes we teach things language based. And so you have to, you know, kind of yeah. Yeah, ask questions. If you don't understand, I'm not sure what this means or what that means. We've taught people, we've had people from Singapore and Slovenia and Philippines and a lot from Mexico, a lot from, you know, uh, Brazil, a whole bunch from Brazil, uh, France, Germany, uh, <laughs> just goes on. The techniques are universal. That's that's what's really kind of cool about all that. And he went away. There you are. You just jump spaces on me. Somebody took off. So did I answer your question? Because sometimes I can just yeah. talk. <laughs> no, no. I mean, uh, you you were very very clear. And Good. I just one last question. Can I have an autograph, please? Um, sure. Here you go. Damn. Thank you. All the best. Put it on there for <laughs> me. You know, keep them laughing. Okay. Thank you for having that Thank book. You. Yeah, that uh, that book took ten years to write. Ten years. That took me ten years because by the time I got to the end of the book, all that theoretical stuff, the joke structures and the joke writing and all the other, we're all out of date. I I didn't innovated so many more things since then. And I went, oh God, went back and rewrote the whole joke again, whole book again. And, Got at the end, everything's out of date again. And I just kept going through it until I finally, everything was set. That's when I could finish the book. Is that you know, I've, I've gotten better at teaching those things and recognizing more of them. But, but the ones that are in the book, they're the, still the same ones that I teach now. So it took that long for me to actually clarify all that stuff. Nobody else teaches quite like the way that I do. And I'm not that smart. I was trained by a teacher, another guy who taught me how to go in and model out comedy and learn how to teach that and do that stuff. So I had, uh, I had mentors of my own who really, you know, I, I stand on their shoulders. If I could see into comedy quite a ways, it's because of them. So any other questions? Yes, Elizabeth. Do I, oh, is it Elizabeth, Liz, Beth, Liz. where do you go? Betty? I go by it? Liz. Liz, okay, Liz. Hey, All thanks right. so much. Very informative. And thanks for the free uh, webinar. I was curious to know how much experience you have to have to go into the 201. I class. prefer none. No, to go into the 201 class. Oh, uh, you have to take this class. You have to take Period. this class. Period. Yeah. Otherwise, I can't talk to you. I mean, I literally cannot talk. And then I'll end up in the advanced class. I've done this. I've done it twice in my career. And they were for good friends and it alienated the friendship and everything out because I went, you know, okay. So, cause I can't talk to you. You go to a joke. Okay. What's your target assumption here? Well, you know, if you don't know your target assumption, you know how to perform it. What are you doing here? Your performance is all off because it's not connected to what you're knowing here. So let's, uh, let's remove that and let's put that into narrator POV rather than self POV. Huh? What are you, what are you talking about? Okay. So I have to teach him all the staging stuff and all the, the, and the nomenclature and the structures and the print. Oh, you're not adhering to this principle. That principle I taught to you, we've been over that. Well, he wasn't over any of those things. So I literally, he just, I, he just finally went, ah, this is just too frustrating. And both of them quit. And, and cause I, I, I can't, the way I've laid this stuff out is, is as fundamentals. In other words, it's, it's like wanting to go play a, uh, an instrument uh, in a major, uh, going to Juilliard to play an instrument. And they go, okay, let's see what you got. And you're like, well, I've been fiddling around with this thing for, how many years have you been doing stand-up? Three. Three, okay. So, yeah. And I took classes at Flappers and also oh. with Jerry Corley. So I've had three, three work, yeah. I was always in workshop. It's just that I moved to Santa Monica, so I was looking for a local workshop. Um, first of all, they're all my ex-students, all of yeah, them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so now I second of all, second of all <laughs> I hate how they teach. They don't teach uh -huh. anything that I teach. They don't. I mean, I know. I know Jerry. Cor Jerry Corley teaches that to list system, which is fine, but he doesn't yeah. teach you what a joke is. He says it's expectation and surprise. I'm sorry, that goes back to Aristotle and Socrates. That's not new stuff. That's been around for thousands of years. And it has its uses, but it doesn't teach you how expectation and surprise are connected. Mm -hmm. he, and then I took uh, the second class with Ken Pringle. <sighs> 
Okay, so these are all my friends. And then I worked at, yeah, I did, you know, did. The, uh, these are all my at, friends. Oh, and oh. I've turned people down who have been doing stand up for 16 years professionally. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry to say you must take this class because I <laughs> okay. literally won't be able to. Um, I'm not going to talk about other stand-up classes. That's just bad form, especially since I know all those people quite well. And mm -hmm. I would like to remain friends with them. <laughs> so is the 101 class in person? Uh, we have it on Zoom and in IRL, both. Okay. In ah. real life. So uh, go on our website, stand-uptomedy.com or type in Greg Dean Comedy and go to our website and find the one that, that would actually be Gala. If you want to stick around, talk with Gala. Gala could help you with that. And uh, <laughs> how was Vito? Was that fun? I'm sorry. I, I, I actually, uh, I dumped Vito on her because I knew he was just going to talk about himself. He was a lonely guy and he was going to talk about himself for about two hours if we let him. So, uh, and I feel for those guys, I, you know, I know them. So I, I made Gayla listen to him. <laughs> so I think I could figure it out without a breakout. Uh, you're, you're, yeah, you could do that. I'm Gayla. Gayla's a headlining comedian. She's also someone you're going to want to network with as well. Cause she's got ins in most of the clubs too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Anyway, and Felix McNulty at the Shikami Chateau is also my former student. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, they all say you're, you're the, the pop of everything. It's because of the class I'm asking you to take. That's the reason. Uh, I, I, you know, I can teach the advanced class or not teach the advanced class because it's the application of those things. It's the teaching of all of those basic fundamentals. So you have language and understanding that the other, I can guarantee you that they don't teach because uh, they won't teach it because they know me. Because <laughs> I'd call them on, I'd call them up personally and say, what are you doing? That's what I would do. Actually, I called up Jerry Corley. He's still got something out there that he shouldn't have out there. But I had to forgive him because I like him and he is a nice man and I've known him for a lot of years. I think somebody told him, oh, here's a good idea. He used it. And then I had to call him up and say, yeah, that's, that's not yours to use. <laughs> so I like Jerry a lot. He's lovely. And I like Ken too, you know, and uh, Barb and Dave have been good friends for years, et cetera. So, you know, it doesn't mean that we, we have to agree upon the, uh, the uh, kinds of training. So that would, I mean, again, they say it's a really good class because of the 101 class. That's where you get all the great information and the application of it. So, uh, you know, if you think it's really not worth it and stuff, talk to me after you've taken the class and then we'll talk and, and do some something from there for you. Okay. Okay. So, cause uh, that's, you know, that it's really, it's a great class. If this is what you want to do, you know, 40 years. I mean, these guys are, uh, you know, uh, they're doing some of some other things. <laughs> I know, so, and uh, so there's that. So I hope you join us for that because some people can't put their that issue aside to go, oh, he, it's not really a beginner's class. I say it's a beginner's class because people are terrified. Mm -hmm. But it's really a techniques class is what it is. And if they're teaching my joke structure and you go, oh, that's the same thing they're teaching, they're gonna get a phone call <laughs> because uh, that's copyrighted material. Those are intellectual properties that are out there. So I hope you join us and stuff. Is there any other questions? Andre has a question, Greg. Andre! Hi, Greg. Uh, yeah, Elizabeth, I hope you join the class because you got an experience and I wanna hear what you got to say about the other class. Just kidding. I, you know, I like to hear gossip anyways, but uh, I really wanted to ask about, do people just take the one-on-one -on -one class and then go do their thing? Or do they end up taking the- You can the do two? whatever you want to. What we, We're like a trade school, really. 
we're much more like a trade school. In this one, the first class, you're going to learn all those fundamentals. And you're going to get a one-minute routine and, and the process that leads up to that. Then you come in the advanced class, and then, then we help you, my, my tra me, my teachers and stuff, help you build, develop another show, uh, more of a show. And, then, and now every time you repeat it, repeat the 201 class, you get a whole nother show and then get a whole nother show. You know, if you, because your first goal, your first big goal is you got to have 30 minutes worth of worked out material. Then you're employable, even for an opener, because just to let you know, this is the kind of information club owners don't want to look at you until you've got 30 minutes worth of worked out material on one tape without any edits. They want to see how you handle the whole show. Part of it's because if you only have 15 minutes and then there's something that they don't think will work for their crowd or that you, they don't want at their crowd or in their club and they say, oh, pull that out, then you don't have the 15 minutes. And they may very well do that. So they want 30 minutes knowing that they can pick and choose as a beginner because it's a trial. They're seeing what you're, what you're good at and stuff. So you want to develop that. Yeah, 25, you probably get away with it. I've seen people do that, but essentially they, and, I, and I've got that from five different club owners and bookers, because before I got a book out, uh, it's, it's not online right now, because the world's gotten shaken up, but it's called 10 Steps to Getting uh, Work as a Comedian. And it's 10 steps about setting up a business and then all the contacts and everything else. So what we do is we teach you this, the, the fundamentals. And then in the 201 class, if you stay on it, we help you work toward that, that 20, 30 minutes. Once you get that 30 minutes of material or you get close to that, then you take this other class and we're showing you, oh, this is the path you need to go out and get work. And these are the things you need to do. And it's changed. When I was, you used to have to have a physical, you know, press kit. Now there's websites that are called, you know, and there's this and that, all these other things. Do everything online. Uh, your videos, you've got to be, you know, you've all these other things you need to do electronically that are really helpful. But the thing is that 30 minutes, once you get that 30 minutes worth of material, what I find is uh, the world changes in the world of comedy. All these doors start blowing open the, of shows you had no idea existed. Because there's, there's one, there's open mics, and you can know about those, but the ones that, that you'll learn about are these shows where guys, people are running them all over Southern California, and you can get 10, 20, 30 minutes. It's a book show, sometimes even pay, right? But they won't even talk to you, even load, let you know that you they exist until they can see you. When they see you do 30 minutes worth of material, they'll invite you to those places. Then... And I find that that door blows open at about 30 minutes worth of material. These people have been around for a while and have these really nice rooms at different places, you know, and again, some of them are paid some a little bit and some of them are for free, but you go in, it's not a bringer. You got a good audience there and you get to get up and do real stand up comedy, but you, you they got to know you're doing 30 minutes worth of material. Once they know that, Comics will teach you, treat you with respect. Club owners, well, club owners didn't teach anybody with respect. So <laughs> bookers will use you, all kinds of stuff. So uh, it, there's a process that's out there. And that's part of my job is I've been documenting that process. It's been unstated and, and unavailable, except they spend 10 years in the clubs with everybody. You'll learn it. Okay, and so I started writing it all down. What, is, what, is, what are the steps that everybody takes and stuff? And what do they do? What do they, you know, go to club owners, say, what do you want? Why don't I hear the number one problem that, that bookers and, and club owners have? I, this is the biggest thing you could ever learn right here, okay? But they all said their number one issue, comics don't follow directions. Follow their directions verbatim and you'll be ahead of 99% of the comedians out there. They say, call me at Friday at 11, 11 a.m. You call them at Friday at 11 a.m. Not before, not after, not yet. You do exactly what they say because they have a system and you got to fit into their system. And they'll tell you how to fit into their system. And then people get lazy. You go, oh, I'll call them tomorrow at 11. No, I already booked the whole three months. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, I thought it, no, follow directions. Exactly. There's a whole process of, it's, there's, it's, there's many things. It's not just, uh, it, it's show business. <laughs> we can help you with the show and then help you with the business. And that's what we're after, show business. You got to know it. So many comics I know, it's like, 
they're so good at the show. And then all of a sudden they're, you know, and, and they never get a lot of work because they don't really work at the business. It's a balance. Can't just work on the show. Got to work on the business once you, you know. So that's our job is to take you all the way through that journey. And as you get good at it and then boom. And the people who did that call me up all the time, still want advice. They call me up and say, hey, what about this? Oh, can I hire for you an hour? Can I do this? Can you give me a private for this? One of them called up from France and he, you know, I helped him with two TED Talks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, oh, help me, you know, he was outperforming. He was on, uh, he's in the top 10 last comic standing the last year that it was up. This guy's doing other things. So it's, if you want to get there, this is a shortcut. Other stand-up comedy classes, they mostly teach little things here and there and a few good tips and stuff, but they don't, they haven't sat down for 40 years and really tried to build the fundamentals. And that's, that's what I do. And that's, you know, what I'm all about is, you know, to make it, that's it. For me, there's only one shortcut in the world. When anything's difficult and complex, only shortcuts technique, like music or dance or anything that, that is, is difficult and con being an athlete, you know, you kind of, you know, you know, Michael Jordan had a good coach when he was, you know, <laughs> said, sit and work on, dribble, shoot, shoot, you know, shoot all these free throws every day, do this, do that, do this, make it go high so the hole's bigger when it's coming down instead of straight at it. It was, you know, all the people that are great at basketball, you know, or football, you know, they, they've been doing this since they were kids, but they had coaches for fathers, you know, Peyton Manning, his dad was a, his, his coach and was, was a, a NFL quarterback himself. Oh, <laughs> did you know Peyton Manning every summer picked something that was weak in his technique and hired a private coach to work with him the entire off season to fix it? Any little point of technique, like patting a ball before you throw it, things like that. He had a guy back there and make him keep his hand there, you know, before he would throw it. So he had a quicker release instead of that pat, then throw, which was an extra half a second. So the timing, all kinds of stuff, letting his leg come up so he could throw harder, like a pitcher. He worked with a pitching coach from baseball. So he could throw harder and his leg would come up and around like they do because they pitch so hard. You have to do something with all that momentum. If you don't, then it hurts the arm to stop it. Instead, your whole body moves forward and around and stuff. Technique. Okay. That's what it's about. That's the only shortcut, but you still got to work at it. Got to get good at it, you know, and, and put in your time, do your time and put in your 10,000 hours but it's still the only shortcut. Anyway, uh, I am going to take off. Elizabeth, it's good to see you. Luis, thanks for standing, sticking around and having a chat with us. And we'll have a chat, I think, next Saturday or something. Do we have another one set up? I don't know. Anyway, if we do, they'll let you know. I'm going to take off. I leave you with Kev and with Gayla if you have any other questions about anything. And I'm out. Thanks very much. And I hope to see you all in class. Thanks. Good night, Greg. Take care. Pleasure to meet you, sir. That was fun. That was fun. So we have Elizabeth, Louis, Andre, Tanya, Steve, and Kevin. Hey guys, so uh, we're starting next week. We've already started our IRL classes and um, we're currently teaching uh, our classes this week on Zoom. Um, did you guys have some further information you wanted to share with us on who you are, what you're up to, and or some questions? Just curious. So the 101 class that starts next Tuesday is on Zoom or is in person? We have them both ways. Our 101 um, is, I think it's a, a Monday night in LA uh, from like a seven to 10. It's in Santa Monica, but we also have it on Zoom. Uh, Kevin, what's our 101 dates for Zoom? I guess this one, this- uh, I want the in-person one. I think yeah, I, live, I live like right near the promenade. So if it's in Santa oh. Monica, then yeah, we can come to your house and teach. That's so good. <laughs> well, like I said before, I, I just moved here. And so I was looking for like a local class. Yeah. So it, it's gonna be, you can do the one uh, in Santa Monica. Definitely. We start uh, uh, next week, uh, Tuesday. Next Monday is the first in real life class for 101 is next Monday night, 7 to 10 p.m. Santa Monica Playhouse. 
if you go to the website, go ahead, use that discount, get a seat in that class because yeah, it's going to fill up fast. A lot of people want in real life classes. Greg will be there. I, I could be there if you request. And I'm usually there. I just helping. But yeah. So yeah, if you're going to do it, do it because for sure he would love to meet you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So Elizabeth Blakely, I'll look for you. So good. And you got so much training behind you. you you'll know. I wish I hadn't brought that up because it's going to be like, I don't want to speak no, all about that. Not I at all. I want to start fresh. No, here, like here's my own person. Actually, he asked me where I trained before. So I said, yeah. but I bet I, when COVID happened, I just quit because I didn't want to do it on Zoom. I was working on Zoom all day. Yeah. And so that just didn't seem like, um, get it uh, you know so but now that we're back in person the world's opened up again yeah i'm excited it's always good to share where you trained or what you've done before because greg likes to know like where where you're coming from with with your you know what you're all about and what's in your head and what skills you have and how he can tweak that and help you so it's very good just to share that that's not going to work against you that's going to work for you so okay there's a certain level of like, oh, much respect because you, you, you believe in investing in your career. You train, you, you're used to listening and taking classes and, and um, learning some fundamentals and skills. That's admirable. So that's really great. I mean, some people have no training and they come in just wanting to be patted on the back because they were good at an open mic. <laughs> so we have to kind of kind of show them what training is. So you're going to be a great student and be fantastic. So good, good for you. I can't wait to meet you. Well, I just did, Elizabeth. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. Um, we have Steve and Tanya, Andre, Louis, Luis, Luis, Louis. Um, it's Luis. I know it's Luis. Like, yeah. I mean, which sure works for, for you. Like I mean, I, I don't mind. You got Luis. You got a hundred names, and I, I. Which one is your favorite? Is it Gomez or do you prefer? Uh, no, uh, Luis is like my first name. The other one is the middle. And here in Mexico, we have two last names. So one from my dad, the other one from my mom. So, did, did your mom uh, give up her name when she got married? Did she keep her we name? We don't do that here. <laughs> hey, I <can> tell that. <laughs> yeah. That's a great idea. It's almost like keep your identity. You know, we do. We have a choice here. We can We can hyphenate. But yeah. you guys don't even hyphenate. Wow. Nope. <laughs> um, I just have one last quick question and I, I'm going to head out because it's kind of late here. Um, how do you determine like the dates in the long run? Because if I can be honest with you, I really want to take the, the workshop, this 101 class, and then probably the second one. Uh, but, you know, $1 for you guys is 20 pesos for me. And that's a lot. I mean, it's not like a lot, lot, but I, I really have to, you know, with my savings, especially because I don't work. I'm a student. So, um, and I'm, I'm hoping to take the, the workshop, like, at the end of the year, hopefully. So, are you having still, you know, the Zoom sessions? Uh, uh, um, yeah, we are. Um, Kevin, do we have a calendar somewhere? Or Tanya, do we have a calendar oh. somewhere we can share? I don't think we have a full calendar to share with people, but we're on a six-week cycle. Starts every six weeks, so okay. we're getting ready to start right now. This is the start of the six-week cycle. Next week starts the five weeks of the 101 class. So, so the start of the six-week cycle, it's the free intro and then five classes. So right. I want to suggest or invite you uh, to return that email that you got from Mike uh, Ella. Did you get an email about this uh, free seminar to attend? The free yeah, seminar? I did. I did. I, I did reply. Return, reply to her again and ask her about an idea of a payment plan that could get you paid in full by the time you're ready to take the class at the end of the, su at the, end of the summer. Because what I anticipate, and I've been doing this for a long time, and it's, it's, it's interesting, if the money issue right now is what's kind of in the way because of the comparison with the, the money exchange, mm. if it's an issue now, it's not going to be a different issue at the end of the summer either. It's gonna, it might be some of the same issue. And I would recommend uh, you know, uh, you know, start to make a payment toward that class so by the time that comes up, you're paid in full. Could be that could be a way to to work you in. Okay. 
Okay. So whatever you could pay now to get started and then make, you know, weekly payments or something like that, or uh, allow us to work with you, maybe it's $50 a week or something like that until you're ready to take it at the end of the summer. We'll just have to keep a tally. We, we don't normally do that. And this is me stepping outside the realm of what we normally do. Uh, I'm going to hear about this in our meeting later, but <laughs> But I, I, if you really are interested in taking the class and, and it's hard to come up with the money right now, I get it. Um, but I wouldn't wait until you're ready to take it because it's still going to be $400, kind of, $349. And it, it'll be another reason to put it off because, oh my God, it's time for Christmas or something. Because this is June and then July and then fall happens. You're going to start school again because you're a student because right now you're in your summertime. So are you are you off right now? Yeah, but I'm basically two subjects out. I mean, I just I'm almost done with college. Basically, I'm sorry. But, but in September, you're going to be enrolling again, getting back in. I, I would assume you're almost done. But are you graduating in December or at the end? Yes, of the I am. Yeah, a lot of money is going to go toward graduation and you're not experience. really <laughs> okay. here yeah. in Mexico is kind of free. So okay. that's yeah. Well, I think that you're planning on taking this class when you're going to have other classes to take when you re-enroll back in school too. So you're doubling up if you wait, but that's on you. Maybe you can handle that. But I'm just saying that, that, you know, if the money, if that's the issue, start paying, making me a payment plan. So you'll be kind of forcing yourself to actually follow through at the end of the summer because you would have paid for it. And so it's ready to go. We can reserve that class for you and reserve your seat in that class once it's paid in full. But if you say, ah, just wait till then, then that, then that comes up and it's like, oh, well, I still don't have the money and I'll have to wait two more months from there. And then it's just a habit that you inadvertently make. People do it a lot. They don't even know I do it a lot. It's not even, it's like, oh, I'm going to do it. But I have a great habit of going to do stuff. <laughs> so, you know, like it's been like three years. I still haven't started my screenplay. You know what I mean? Because no, I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. But inadvertently, we put things off because we are trying to find the time in our life. So we get really good at not finding the time for that because we have other things that take precedent. And I don't see you any more busy in the fall with your schooling than I see you now or you know next year. We can do this next year. We're gonna, we're in business. We're gonna keep going, but we'd love to work with you if you find a way for us to fit in your life. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. And I hope I didn't get you in, in troubles. Uh, with... <laughs> of course you did. She's oh. busted. Kayla, you're gonna be written up. No. You have to stay after class. <laughs> Detention, Gayla. What do they say? Uh, Well-behaved women do not make history books or something. I don't know what the, how that saying goes. So I don't care. I don't care. I'm throwing my towel at you. All right. It already went over the computer. <laughs> so yeah, Luis, I think it's great. Um, think about that. Think about yeah, consider I, that. I sure will. And well, and, oh, and by the way, only you know if you've ever wanted to do something like two years ago or three years ago and you never did it because you're going to do it. It's one of the things we're really good at doing. It's like, ah, oh, eventually I'll get, but right now you showed up here. You're doing it. You've done this. That's huge. Do you know that's half the battle? You have won half the battle. You're, you've already here. I'll bet you, you're going to leave this free seminar with some new knowledge about writing comedy and doing stand up, right? You're enriched already. Good for you. And it's free. Guess what we can give you when you're actually studying with us every week so we're looking forward to it. we do it every, we're really good at what we do so it's up to you to trust that and to just jump in and, and commit so you can be somewhere different in your on your comedy journey by the time the fall starts we have in real life classes and by the way elizabeth when you're in 201 you'll move right to um the improv and doing a showcase and also we're setting up shows at the new comedy club. There's two of them. There's um, comedy a comedy chateau in Burbank or Lancashire. And there's one uh, um, in, where is it, Kevin? Bellflower. Yeah, 
Bellflower, they're already asking me to come out and do some spots. So we have a lot of places to put you in, especially on Zoom as well. But we need people to get started and stay committed, those who really want to get, get moving on their career. But again, you know, uh, baby steps. We get it. We totally get it. But I'm just letting you know, I've met people that are very enthusiastic and then there's something in them that just, I'm going to hold back. <laughs> and hold back, be safe. It's up to you completely. But I respect that. So I just want you to know there's two, there's two ways of looking at it. And it's late. How late is it? What time is it there where you are, Louise? Uh, nearly 11 p.m. So. Oh, come on, man. Comics work at night. <laughs> <laughs> I work better in the morning, like at five in the morning. So, uh, oh. well, thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure. I really, really feel honored to talk to you. So yeah. thank you. And I'll do my best to get that money ASAP. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Talk to Michael about that. She'll uh, she'll let everybody know that need, whoever needs to know to help you work that through, and we'll get that done for you. <laughs> Thank you very much, and You're well, welcome. gotta go. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Andre has a question. What up? Unmute. Unmute so we can hear you. Uh, yeah. I kind of I kind of forgot. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I was uh, <laughs> I was beating up the guy. <laughs> not really. Not really. I was just uh, yeah. I'm just excited. I think uh, I think it's a uh, um, it's good. I I understand the struggles of people in school and stuff. So um, I think I'm gonna try. I I was gonna not take the class when I first signed up today because I've been on so many seminars on Zoom. I was oh that was my question. Yeah. Are you guys gonna keep doing Zoom uh, beyond everything returning back to normal life or whatever? I think so. Um, I think we will be. Um, we're not going to be. We're not going to be making a decision. To, am I getting feedback or is that? I don't know. It's coming from your voice. Let me. Let me mute. Yeah. So I think we will because here's the thing, Kevin. Kevin, did you go pee? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, no, Kevin, not yet. <laughs> Kevin has to go pee. Uh, Kevin found an article that the, the world famous comedy store. And by the way, Elizabeth. The world famous comedy store is going to set up TV cameras and, and monitors and screens so that they can invite people that don't live in California to watch comedy shows on Zoom in the main room or the belly room. One of those rooms, they have like three rooms. They have the belly room, main room and the main stage. So they're going to be doing that. So that means that people that and they pay money to watch this comedy show. So that means that audiences will be coming from all over the world and they're not sitting in the actual comedy room. So that means that comedy Zoom shows will still be going on. And you and I, uh, Andrea, you and I and Elizabeth, all three of us, we can do a show in New York on Zoom. We can travel the world on Zoom. And by the way, a lot of Zoom technique for teaching performance on Zoom will train you and hone your skills and refine you to be able to work in corporate America. Because this is corporate America. That's what Zoom is. It's a meeting. You'll make a lot more money in corporate America than you will in clubs in the first place. So there's some benefits, even though it's not in real life, there's still some benefits to being more sophisticated at these funny meetings. I think that it's still a worthwhile venue until it just goes out of fashion. So we're not going to. That, that was my approach is that uh, I used to be in education and I used to do poetry just for fun in college. And recently I was just so angry and my poetry wasn't po poetic and people were laughing. So you... I decided I decided maybe I should switch, switch up. And then, uh, of course, career wise doing education was a, was was getting old for me i was a career substitute so i'm good at getting beat up and stuff like that on stage <laughs> so uh that's why i'm here so i think i every time it says what's your career choice i, I always put comedian i should have been that so uh, I think I'm gonna andre are you gonna take the one andre are you gonna take the 101 class in real life uh, see, I would like. See, that was the other thing I wanted to ask because I'm in Modesto and I want to go to LA because I just want to be near where the stuff is. Um, 
people in Modesto? From the Bay Area, but, huh? There's black people in Modesto? Awesome. Yeah, there's a couple of us, like four of us. They're all related, you know, we're cousins. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I just wanted to be closer to L.A. because I know that's where the comedy is, I think, and um, the open mics and stuff. And that's how I found this whole seminar, you guys, class, because I was just curious about open mics. Uh, there is Modesto. Is it near Bakersfield? You no, know, it's in the Central Valley. We're in San Joaquin County. We're closer to like San Jose, Sacramento. Yeah, it's near Turlock. Yeah, Turlock. <laughs> oh, Turlock. Okay. Yeah. Turlock. A bunch of food. And, yeah. The <laughs> close to Sacramento? Yeah, I'm about an hour from Sacramento. Oh, okay. We've had people drive in from San Francisco every week to take the one hour class. We've had people drive up from San Diego every week taking the one-on-one class. And are that's you what I was going to ask. Could I hybridize it? Is it possible I could take a few in person, take a few not in person? On Zoom? Sure. No, well, like if I want, yeah. Like, can I take some on Zoom, like this one-on-one -on -one class, say I wanted to show up next week and just take the intro and then the following one be on well, Zoom? Well, it's a lot easier on our uh, paper trail, finding out where students are and, and trying to keep everything straight if you pick one or the other. Here's what I would okay. suggest. Here's my suggestion. Why don't you take the Zoom 101 and then drive into the, the in real life tour? And in that way, uh, you'll be accustomed to driving in. You'll be able to perform at the improv and the other venues we have where it benefits you more to be in person as a 201 student or you're working on your comedy show. Because like you said, you want to go to open mics or you want to go to you want to perform. So let's get you done with the uh, fundamentals because you don't live in town necessarily. Let's get you done with the fundamentals online. And then when it's time to perform a lot and a lot more, then you come to town for that because then we can set it up where you're coming to town for class. And if you get, if you stay overnight, we can probably get you a gig or somewhere else locally. You never know. So you just plan that and you'll have enough time. You have six weeks to plan that and just go right into the 201 where you're going to be performing and performing and performing. I think that's probably a better use of your time because we still have Zoom classes. So that would be, that might work a little bit better. I mean, what do you think, Elizabeth? Does that make sense if you were coming from Modesto? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Then you can jump right in and learn and then come later. Yeah. I was actually going to interrupt you and be like, that's a good idea. And then I'm like, I've said enough. I'm going to be quiet. Then you ask me. Oh, no, I love that. So I, I knew you were thinking. I saw you kind of nodding. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, because that makes sense. I feel a little disappointed because Andre would have been a good classmate. I'm probably going to take the in-person one because I'm on Zoom just all the time. And right. I yeah so andre should be disappointed though oh my god you gotta thank yeah you. but but stick with I it andre. Way, <laughs> don't listen to me complain about zoom hey, people learn welcome. on zoom all the time andre you are welcome to take the zoom class and then still go to the one-on-one just to see elizabeth it's fine. I mean, I got you can you can find with her. Go, but we, I already said you could. We, it's difficult sometimes, but you know, with one or two students, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. Nothing's impossible. But I was just okay. trying to save you on the gas. But definitely, yeah, that's what I was thinking. The gas, yeah, yeah, yeah this gas and stuff, you know. And yeah. um, if you want to try to do it, do it. Do whatever you want to do. And it's, it's, uh, you know, you know, by you doing that, guess what's going to happen? We're going to learn to accommodate that. <laughs> so we'll learn from you. Uh, we just haven't done it yet. You know, we just opened back up, so we just haven't done it. But yeah, if you want to be our inaugural student that does half and half, yeah, <laughs> let's work that. So you decide. What do you think? I appreciate it. Thank you. I thank you. Thank you for the feedback. I think uh, give me something to chew on on that one. But yeah, I think I probably do the one on one on on Zoom and then try to sneak into one of them towards the yeah. end. I mean, look at this already smiling. She's like, "Oh, we're gonna have dinner." Oh, All right, the, 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 the poet. Congratulations! The poet and then people. 
laughed at his poems. <laughs> I can relate to that. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask you if you got any material you want to write about the lady that was at the inauguration. What's her name? And she was the poet. You're like, oh, that was again. Oh man. Amanda Gorman. Yeah, I was a little jealous. <laughs> I know, right? Amanda Gorman, she's from here. She got her start at, at Beyond Baroque. It's a small world. It's a small world. I was gonna put it. Yeah, no, Elizabeth was the person to know for some reason. <laughs> she looked like she knew some stuff just sitting there. She was the one of the quiet ones, see? <laughs> That's what they always told me, sit next to the quiet one in class, you'll learn something. They're, they're up to something. I love this, uh, Kevin, this is so funny because back in the day, uh, you know, the uh, founders of the flappers, you know, they didn't know each other and they met like this, you know, Barbara Holiday, Dave Rhinus, they kind of met, they, you know, they took the one-on-one -on -one together, then they took two-on-one -on -one together, and then they took two-on-one -on -one together a few more times because there's a lot of skills to take and stuff and you keep taking off layers and layers of your defenses and your, and your fears come off and you start to trust your instinct and all this stuff, we guide you and hold your hand and baby steps and we get you there. So at some point they were like, oh, they're working together as a team now. They got to know each other. And guess what? That all results in a comedy club, Flappers. So Andre and Elizabeth, you two might be working that, that little plan out. And eventually, three years from now, <laughs> a comedy club on the, the Third Street Promenade. Should I say that? I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. I no, 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 don't say that. <laughs> yeah. The Third Street Promenade has just changed so much in the last few years, though. A lot has changed, man. Ever since the mall changed and all that stuff, I don't, I don't know. Is, is it is it still good? I haven't been there in a while. It used to be kind of like an old town feeling, like a real beach town, and now it's trying to be like this world class international city. It's a little too yeah. fancy now. Yeah, the it's, mall. It's getting Vegasy, and it doesn't make sense. It's just I don't know how it survived the. Uh, the the money needed for retail when all that stuff closed down for a year i don't know mm -hmm. yeah macy's closed oh, macy's closed yeah is tanya still here not like her out. is she there is she oh, is she tanya. working with you guys or she's a student uh she she's she works with us um and okay i thought she was a student who was being really quiet i know yeah okay. she kind of helps us uh with uh with some of our, you know, our classes and our structure and some back, back, uh, like tech on the back end. Uh, she oh, okay. I just thought she was like a student waiting to talk or something. Oh, so well. I'm going to go. I'm really glad to meet everyone. And um, the only thing that's really holding me back is like leaving and walking around downtown at 10 o'clock. I mean, I live here right here by the Pond, like I said, but that's late for me hmm. to be walking around. Um, um, talk to us about that. People, I mean, yeah, just because of the way it, it just personally, like even if I'm parked in the structure, I wouldn't go in there at ten o'clock at night. Are, are, um, do you by myself you, ever? <laughs> just what? Like I've been mugged before. I don't want to try that again. So I'll see if maybe my kid can give me a ride. But besides that, I mean, if he's down for picking me up, yeah, and then, you, yeah. Well, we can work with you on that. We'll figure out. I mean, there's Uber. I mean, I don't know, but it depends. The Uber's kind of unsafe too, but you know, it just, yeah. I know we have to be safe in today's world. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I walk around here every day. There's a lot of people that need help and I don't want to meet them at 10 o'clock. <laughs> I don't, you know. Have you been to the place? I don't judge them, but I don't want to meet them at 10 o'clock either. Have you been I, to the playhouse? Do you know the location? It's right by Wilshire. Yeah. I, I know where the playhouse is. I, wasn't I didn't know that you guys were there until like today when I was looking at the website I was like oh they're right there and it's, it's right by the corner right by everything the lights are all on yeah and there's there. like a Thai place right next door I know where it Starbucks is to come back remember Starbucks um that they left it was by the Borders bookstore remember they took that away mm -hmm. yeah but you know yeah. it's really I've been living in Burbank for the last eight years, but I just moved back to, to Santa Monica. So really nice to meet you, Kevin and Gayla, yeah. Andre, Tanya, who's not here. So <laughs> thanks so much. Thank I really so like much. to meet you. I really hope to meet you and see you in class for sure. Okay. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. Thanks.
Thanks, guys. You got All right, it. y'all. That's a wrap. Good. I'm going to go pee, too. All right. <laughs> I'll see you guys later, man. See you later, Kevin.